Hi, I'm Mike Elliott and you're watching CEO Live TV. In this episode, we're joined by Dr. Neil Carmichael, CEO of Pacific Green Technologies, ticker PGTK. PGTK has developed a patented portfolio of emissions control technologies for use in both power plant and marine applications. They have a veteran management team and a global footprint with offices in the US, Europe, and China, and they're rolling out one of the most competitive technologies to date to help large ships with category three diesel engines, such as cargo ships, control emissions, and meet increasingly strict environmental regulations. Good afternoon, Neil. Thanks for being on the show. Good afternoon, Mike. Thanks. So first of all, congratulations on the deal with Union Maritime Limited. What can you tell us about the agreement, what it entails, and the ship your technology is going to be installed on? Yes, Mike. The technology, the PGT technology, was originally designed for ships, and the first version, version was tested some years ago on a Canadian icebreaker. The, uh, so we're familiar with that market, the certification processes, the installations, and for us, this is a key mi milestone in the company's evolution. We're commercializing a technology for the marine sector. Our technology design is such that we have lower OPEX and uh, more compact footprint. It's a smaller device than the competition. The, uh, so we believe uh, we have a unique place in the market. The, Union, Union Maritime Limited, run a range of ships in the North Sea, they, uh, which is an emission controlled area like the Baltic, like uh, the coasts of Canada and America. The, uh, and the agreement we have in place now with them is one where the PGT equipment delivers savings and those savings are paid to uh, PGT until the cost of the equipment is paid off. Of course, it's by way of a pilot. So after that, we anticipate, uh, as the news release says, significant extra orders from Union and others. And Neil, what can you tell us about the SICA and how soon these large ship fleets need to be in compliance with the new IMO Tier 2 and Tier 3 regulations? Yes, well, SICA, which is a, an IMO, International Maritime Organization term, stands for Sulfur Emission Controlled Areas. It's slightly redefined recently into uh, ECAs, or Emission Controlled Areas. Uh, IMO has been discussing uh, increased emission controls with its membership for many years they, uh, and with uh, increasing environmental concerns new regulations took effect on the uh, 1st of January 2016 all ship owners operating in the emission controlled areas the, that's the North Sea, the Baltic, American, Canadian coasts are required to take action uh, over the next year or so there's a phase-in period they can burn more expensive fuels the MGO marine gas oil or even LNG, liquefied natural gas, or they can burn the conventional fuel, heavy fuel oil, uh, bunker fuel, some people call it, the, and clean the exhaust gases with a technology such as PGTs. So that's where we're about offering a, a technology, a capability in that area that's suited for retrofitting into existing ships. New ships are a different case, and uh, uh, we'll see how that market works out in the next uh, few years. So Neil, next, I want to paint a picture for investors and our viewers. Uh, you know, what kind of economic impact would these large ships uh, expect if they didn't have a technology like the Pacific Green Emissions Control Technology? In other words, would they have to redo their engines to accommodate this new low sulfur fuel? Would they have to run this fuel 100% of the time, even outside of these SICA zones? And, and what are approximately the costs you know, of the new fuel relative to the existing fuel they're using, like this bunker fuel you mentioned? Yes, yeah, so using uh, the alternatives I mentioned, LNG or MGO involves changes to the engines, they, uh, and uh, uh, also the, the fuels themselves are more expensive. So there's uh, an economic case, we believe, strong economic case for our technology, using the existing fuel, but cleaning the exhausts. The, uh, we anticipate, let's say, compared with the alternative of using uh, clean diesel, MGO or marine gas oil, the, uh, for a ship such as we're looking at, the Westminster, the Union Maritime ship, uh, the savings of the order of two to three thousand US dollars a day. The, uh, uh, of course, the savings compared with LNG are different. They depend on the LNG price, uh, but they currently they're uh, they're more than that for LNG savings. So the MGO comparison is one we like to make, and uh, two to three thousand dollars a day adds up to some substantial amount of money over two to three years. 
Yeah, it certainly does, especially when you multiply that across uh, thousands of ships uh, of these large cargo ships. You know, there's tens of thousands uh, literally operating at any given day in, in today's oceans. Um, and the other thing is I want to point out is that there's this added flexibility factor. So you've got these requirements to operate in these SICA zones. They've got to have a different type of engine to burn this new low sulfur fuel, which costs approximately double what they're currently using. Um, but with your technology, they have this added flexibility where they enter the Sika zone, they can turn the scrubbers on, reduce their emissions, and then when they're out of those zones, turn it back off. And there's no need to retrofit the the engines, which I'm sure cannot be cheap, right? Correct. And there's also the issue of how you supply the fuels to the many marine bunkers, the many uh, harbors and ports that uh, currently provide fuels to all the uh, marine fleets, the and bunkering for NGOs, underway but it's not everywhere and of course bunkering for LNG is another case altogether it's not not uh, yet fully established at all so uh, as you'll see in the IMO papers there's much debate about how this uh, change to improved emission controls should be executed and uh, we're part of that change we anticipate a significant part well, Neil, that's all the questions we had for today. Um, anything else uh, investors can expect this year? I mean, the time frame for getting this installed on the ship, I assume, is uh, within the next six months, and then you roll it out. How long are you testing it? Uh, in, anything else investors should know right now? Yeah, so the time frame uh, will be up and running and uh, hopefully proven in, in nine months' time or so. The uh, We're looking at uh, a significant market, the, uh, some, as you say, tens of thousands of ships, we anticipate up to 60,000 ships requiring some kind of retrofit uh, by one of the means I've described in the next uh, three to five years. So quite a significant market. Uh, we anticipate the target uh, market for us is of the size of uh, $500 million, so uh, quite uh, substantial. The, we anticipate also pay payback times for our installations for any ship. Different ships use different amounts of fuel. The, of the order of two to three years, whatever the ship, and then uh, in the following two to three years, as much money saved again. So if you're a ship owner, you've got an existing ship, you're planning to own it for another five to 10 years, we believe we have a very compelling case. Well, Neil, thanks again for your time. Certainly, this is an exciting uh, development for Pacific Green Technologies. We've been following the story. We'll continue to follow it. Um, it was a pleasure having you on the show. And until next time, uh, goodbye. Good to speak again, Mike. Thanks. You've been watching CEO Live TV, and we've been talking again to Dr. Neil Carmichael, CEO of Pacific Green Technologies, ticker PGTK. Pacific Green is focused on addressing the world's need for cleaner and more sustainable energy. The company's strategy is to build through organic development and acquisition a portfolio of patented, competitive, cutting-edge technologies designed to meet increasingly stringent environmental standards. To learn more about them, please visit their website at www.pacificgreentechnologies.com. Thanks for watching CEO Live TV.